All right, for this little segment, we're going to do another little quick tutorial with a little more creative, just fun lighting style. This is 3D Max and V-Ray. And the lighting style we're going to go for, um, I think there's different various names for it. I don't really uh, know the proper name for it, just warms and cools. But I know the easier way to mention this is John Wick. Uh, when you think John Wick, the club scene kind of like this so you have the purples the blues the uh the atmosphere effects so that's kind of what we're gonna go for so let's see john wick lighting let's see what that does so if we there you go perfect example john wick lighting so here we got the reds we got the blues we got a little bit of warmth from the muzzle flash another good example right there another beautiful example Another one. So in a nutshell, warms and cools. That's the key ingredient in this style. I'm a real big fan of when we get the pinks and the baby blues, the teals. I think it's just a very fun style. It looks beautiful and it's very creative. So that's what we're kind of going to go for. So the first things first is I'm going to set up a car that's silver because uh, I want my lights to do the fun stuff for the, uh, the image. So right now I have a Ferrari. And I'm going to just put in a dark gray, dark, dark floor. Nothing really fancy with the floor, just a, kind of like a little base foundation for our environment. There we go. So, just something for it to sit on. We'll go underneath, make sure it's actually making contact. So, something like that. As you can see, this car has uh, some negative camber. It's just obnoxious and fun. All right, so first things first is we have to add the atmosphere. So with V-Ray, it's beautiful. I'm going to go to the press 8, go to Atmosphere tab, and add the V-Ray Environment Fog. Now, this is just kind of throwing settings together, and we'll see how it goes, and we'll adjust on the fly. So I'll probably set it to 30 feet. And I'm just going to move the Environment tab over here. And now we're just going to create a light source. So, with that said, we're going to go to V-Ray, light, and we're going to create a light. And we're just going to create something in, in the corner. So I am going to actually make this a disk light, something like this, make it targeted. Aim it at the car coming from over here from the back side. All right. Turn on V-Ray RT. Now we're going to see what we got. Now, if we look at the photos on the internet, the thing that actually gives us the atmosphere, or better yet, the visual style, is the lights. It's not the colors of the objects, it's the lights in the environment. So that's what we need to do is we need to make sure we have the lights that create, oh, and change fog height to like 20 feet. So first things first, I'm gonna turn on some directionality. So we need to start adding our first, which is gonna be kind of like the blue light. Something like this. I'm gonna change this to watts, 800, 3000. So there we go. Now for fog color, let's just see what this does. So kind of lower the density. And I like what we're getting here. It's giving us some nice environmental play, a little diffusion. All right, so that, that's pretty. Now what I'll do is turn off effect reflection. So right now I'm just getting just a nice atmospheric tone. We're getting some specular highlights, some directionality of the car. I think this is looking cool. So now the next thing is to add the warmth. So we're gonna just copy the light as a copy and just bring it in kinda right here, make it invisible. Bring it back. So I'll probably end up bringing it up maybe a little bit overhead. I don't really want to see the spot in the environment. See how we're seeing this in the top left corner? I do not want that. I don't want to see where it's coming from. I just want the effect of the light. So I'll probably just uncheck effect specular as well. So that way we're just working with the 
environment atmosphere. And this is what we're going to give it that uh, the pinkish purple tone. So bring that up. So let's see here if we do something like this. All right, so what I actually want to do, let's see here. We're probably going to go to exclude, include none, like so. And now we're going to restart the preview because I don't actually want it to do anything on my car, at least not yet. We're going to see how it goes. So there we go. We're just getting some atmosphere play, and the atmosphere is reflecting on the car. So I, I'm kind of digging what that's doing. All right, so now let's see what we have. So this is kind of what we have as reference. This is our environment. So we're starting to get the warms and cools. Let's see what happens when we, all right, I'm gonna press eight again. Oh, it was open. So let's see what would happen if we bring this up. So as you can see, it's really blasting. Let's see what happens. We just gotta find something in between. Um, let's see what fog emissive. I think that. So I I do not want that. None of that. So let's see. Thirty. Eighty. Twenty. Ten. That thirty was nice. Let's see what a uh, height does if we change it. I think that's a nice comfortable zone. Let's see scattered GI doesn't really do anything, so let's not even worry about that. Okay, so we have that. Now what we want to do is add another tone to this. So I'm just going to copy the light again. All right, so we're going to introduce the light again. Let's see. I'm just going to look at reference again on the internet. Different scenes from the movie see what we like all right let's see what adding some red tone to this will do so don't don't necessarily like that Okay, I'll probably turn the specular down to like 0.2. And then what we can do as well, so see under the lights, I'm going to uncheck use all lights. And this way, I could control which lights I want. And the reason for this is, you know how I mentioned I don't like the annoying uh, source of where the light's coming from? Well, I want to also light my car without it actually affecting the fog. And this will allow me to have a lot of control over how the uh, the car looks without get flooding the environment with just weird light sources. So we're going to select this pink light again. Change the directionality to like 0.2. Let's see what happens when we just blast it. I just wanted to really fill the whole scene. There we go. And I'm actually going to go and uh, turn off exclude and let it naturally affect the car. I, I, I kind of don't like how it. It gives us a weird, awkward shade. So there we go. We have natural shadows. It feels like it belongs in the environment again. Let's see what specular does, and we'll just tone it down like this. So this way, it's real. Let's turn on lens effects. OK. So let's see what's this specular. Just tone that down a little bit. All right. 
Now, let's see. What can we add? I, I feel like I want to add just a little bit more pink tone to the whole scene before we start lighting the car. So I'm just going to copy this light again. Whoops. Wrong item. Copy the light. I'm just going to bring it over here. And let's see what we do. Nope, don't want that. So, as you can see, what's happening is it's flattening the image. So, what I want to probably try to do is bring that there. Let's see what narrowing this down. All right, I'm just gonna darken the ground some, so that way it becomes more dramatic. Let's see, just bring this in. So as you can see what's happening is it's affecting the car. It's not really giving us much fill in the environment. And I kind of want more environment play than anything. So I think something like this might be pretty. So this way we we get that tone of pink back at the car. We're getting, oh, I know why. I know why. We didn't add it to the light sources. There we go. I was really confused by why I wasn't getting much play. There we go. All right. Now it's working the way it should. So now that it's actually functioning, what we're going to do is add some of that fill to our environment. And that's really adding a lot of fill. Might even I was kind of digging what we were adding to the car. So let's see that again. So we'll tone that down. All right, so that's nice. Um, I'll probably try to add a little different color tone to it. Just so we have some diversity in, in color range. So this is like a hot pink. Now let's go back here. Change this a little bit. So maybe get this one to be a little bit more purple. There we go. Now we're talking. So now we have this gorgeous body line. We have some of that atmosphere haze. We have this. I'll probably end up turning the wheel out some. So let's make sure it's in local because of the negative camber. All right. 10 degrees. Even though you can't even see it because of how slammed it is. Let's do a 10 degree there. Keep it realistic and symmetrical. All right. So the last thing I want to probably do is add one more light and kick this rear end so let's see what this will do oops yep all right so we're going to copy the light light five and again always try to work with angles away from the camera that's what allows for uh pretty lighting with dramatic tones otherwise you gotta flatten the image all right so here we go I'm gonna make the light small and i'm probably gonna make this a cool light i'm gonna like what see, as you can see we get some really cool looking directional atmosphere from the intensity of the light i think that's awesome and now let's see what happens when we make it something like a teal color So 
bump it up some. Let's see what this will do. All right, so that looks kind of nice. So we have some nice range in colors. And once we're retouching, we saturate it. This is going to really pop. So now what's happening is we have this image. We have the car. And the car itself is kind of matte. It feels very matte finished, even though this is a very glossy and reflective uh, car paint material. So what we're going to do is tweak that. Uh, first thing I want to do is adjust my glass. I want to tint it. I don't like how uh, clear and see-through it is. So we'll select this, glass windows, we're going to darken it. There we go, nothing too limo-like, but enough to give us some, uh, some dramatic glass, uh, add some reflection. So this is the fun part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to light the car without the fear of it really affecting the atmosphere because we're using the only lights that we want. So I'm going to turn that uh, out, close it out, name this ground, and I'm going to exclude it. Just like you would if you were to shoot on location, you would uh, mask out the car, strobe it or light paint it, whatever, and just mask it in post. Well, we're just going to do it all in one. So there we go. Now that I have that... Let me make sure I did exclude, not include. Sorry, there we go. That's where I screwed up. And that's why my car was still blank. So now that we have this, we're going to start seeing some exciting shape and definition in the sheet metal. And this is going to also give us some of that silver back into the image. So we're going to make this like 0 0.3, 500, make this invisible. Now we're just going to kind of reposition it. So I, I don't want it to affect the windows, but I do like this wet, streaky reflection. Um, probably the bitmap. I'm going to probably throw my HDRI on here, take a look at that. So there we go. I'm going to load up this map first. Um, half the gradient. Let's see if I make this... All right, I am going to rotate this 90 degrees. So that way the streak is all the way across, just like that. Uh, offset the tiling so I don't get any bizarre line. And I'm just going to move this in my scene. I want to make sure that it is okay perfect it is doing exactly what it needs to do okay i'm going to angle it a little bit better so it hits the sheet metal more appropriately again i don't want it to hit the windows okay this is beautiful we're getting some nice streaky reflections we're starting to see that uh, gloss finish in the sheet metal now i'm going to copy the light again Move it down. Turn off directionality. I don't want that. And then what I'm going to do is make it bigger like this. But I'm going to load one of my other maps in here. The one that's kind of like a soft box. So gradient square see what this does there we go and i like this the uh the soft diffused look that's just giving me information and not really uh taken away from anything so i'm just gonna so there we go i'll probably just bump up the scale
All right, now what I do want is some beautiful soft rim light. I'm going to copy the same light source that I have here and move it above the car. Move it over to this other side. Position it above the car like so. Again, really push the size of the light. And now move it in the back. And what I will do is just make sure it's above all the other light sources, even though it's invisible, it shouldn't affect it, but just in case. Because when adding this atmosphere, it could do something weird. All right. That's given us a nice, beautiful rim light. Not too distracting, but still showing enough detail. I like that. I'm going to copy that same light over to the rear end to show off some of the shape and design of that rear end. All right, and we're going to just move this light down. There, that's pretty. So look at that. We're getting some real curvature. The uh, the trunk area or the hood, whatever you want to call that, since the engine's back there. So 400. That's nice. And we're getting some rim light over here. Some beautiful shape out here. And last but not least, uh, these are aftermarket wheels. So we could try to push those out. So let me see if I have them in a layer. And I do. So I'm just going to make a selection set named wheels. And just to confirm, they are all part of the same layer. Beautiful. Oh, I hope this did not just crash. OK, it did not. So I am going to quickly save this. There we go. All right, as you can see, my save was extremely fast. I always use uh, XRefs for my working files, so that way they're extremely small and effective, and I also save hard drive space that way. All right, so wheels, we're gonna select all the wheels, include them into the uh, selection of the light. There we go, make sure that's invisible so it doesn't affect our uh, view in any way all right and what we really want to do is just add some detail to these wheels these are fun looking aftermarket wheels so let's really make them pop And let me see what positioning the light kind of like this will do. Trying to find a uh, fun angle. But then the other thing what you want to keep in mind is you don't want to go too crazy with the light and make it look like they don't belong in the scene. So I'm just going to turn it on and off. All right, so that's not too bright. That's enough to make them stand out, but not in a very obnoxious kind of way. I'm going to copy this light and do uh, the front wheel as well. Probably bump up the, uh, the size of the light. There we go. And what I really want to do is I want to make sure you could see where the design element of the car is up here. So as you can see right now, it's starting to really fade into the uh, the atmosphere. While I do like it, I just want to see that say, uh, the shape separation. So what I'm going to do 
is this one light, light right here, which is our very big soft box. I'm going to copy this light, move it over here. I'm going to increase its height, but decrease its width. And kind of like this and move him really down almost into the ground. So as you can see, okay, we're getting that rim now. So all I want to do is just move him out. Then I'm going to bump up the width of him so we get more of that feathered edge effect happening. And just keep moving it until we could see that we're literally working with that feathered edge. Something like this. There we go. And now what we want to do is just give it only a little bit of strength. I only want it to work as a rim light separation element, not a uh, like a real source of detail. So even that might be too much. So 20. There we go. So now as you can see what's happening is we see where that body roll of the car is. That's all I want. Nothing more. All right. And if you want, you can turn the tail lights on. I might just leave it as is for this shot and just let the uh, the environment do what it does. So I'm really digging this. We have some beautiful tones. We have some nice haze here. We'll push it in post. Um, maybe add our own little flare overlay in Photoshop. Maybe brush in a little uh, smoke effects. Uh, let's see what happens with the alpha. So that, of course, is a solid fill. So what you can do is render a separate alpha for just the car. And then that will allow, allow you to have a little more control in post. As you can see, just with the RT feathering in, this is becoming really beautiful. And this is going to this is gonna look really nice. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to render it out. And then we'll take it over to Photoshop. So before rendering, I actually went in, I did a quick test, and I turned my uh, objects to very light objects, and I am going to actually render it with the tail lights on. So after dialing it in a little bit, I turned it, uh, added it to the list, and I am going to get a little bit of a play happen. I think it's just going to add a little bit of that red that I wanted to see. So I am, in fact, going to uh, turn the lights on. Anyhow, rendering away now. All right, so the render is done. The one thing I will mention is when you do the alpha, the atmosphere bakes into the alpha. So what we'll do is do a quick little alpha pass. So we'll go to tools, very lights, turn off all the lights real quick. Turn this off. And actually what I'll do is turn everything on and quickly save the file and now go in and turn off all the lights all right going to reset the light lister oh we actually do want this on we'll delete the uh environment fog keep in mind what you do not want to do is overwrite your master file with this since this is a sloppy alpha pass for us so yep replace it don't really care compensate emit on backside just in case there's some weird double geo issues make this black make the ground black gonna go to uh very frame buffer turns off the flares hit render in theory it should fly right through it and it did. All right. So now I'm just going to save the alpha. There we go. Very simple. All right. So now I'm just going to open everything up in Photoshop and then start the retouching. So let's see here. A 
there we go so here's our base render now I'll apply the uh, glare because I like lens flares on everything throw that on there throw the alpha pass in here I'm gonna select the alpha change the blend mode don't need the alpha anymore make this a screen all right so now we just do some uh, fun retouching so first things first is I want to add some smoky type effects into here so I'm gonna throw in a little smoke image in the background make it a screen gonna colorize it there we go like that I'm just gonna change the uh, density of my brush like that throw a different one in here All right. Same thing, colorize it, give us some really nice tone. There we go. Alpha and just go in. Just brush it in over here. There we go, and what we'll do is add another colorize, or, yep. And I do want it to have that hint of purple, and just gently brush that in right over here, so we get that transition. Perfect, then we'll add some uh, foreground type fog type of stuff, all right. Colorize it, make it a little darker. There we go. And this is all subjective. This is just me adding a little more interest to the image as a whole. All right, that's nice. Now what I might do is add a little bit of a, uh, like a glare to the whole thing. So something like this. All right. Just brush it in and brush it out gently okay now I know we have the uh, the intense light coming from over here so I think we could get away with adding kind of like a glare source coming from the top so we'll do that as well so now it's just a matter of finding the uh, the right map and here's one all right gonna make it a screen I'm gonna do colorize just really make it pop There we go. Perfect. So now that I have that, as always, the, uh, the Exposure X stuff. My usual fit and finish. There we go. Add some contrast, some clarity. And once you start adding vibrance and saturation, as you can see, that's where it really comes to life when all these colors just really start blending away and add some glow to it oh yeah so as you can see before and after that's what really brings these things to life is really just pushing that glow and saturation and post and that in a nutshell is how i do my uh 
warm and cool John Wick, whatever you want to call this lighting style renders. Of course, you spend a little more time with whatever you need, light it a little better in terms of the base of the car, maybe spit out more uh, alphas for the sheet metal so you could do more in post. But in a nutshell, this is the uh, the pipeline and the concept of how to do this style of imagery. There we go.